it's only going to become more expensive. So I would say don't build your business off of Instagram, but I think it's a great place to launch your business. I think it's a great place to get feedback. All right, welcome to Commando On Demand Insider, your fast-paced weekly update straight from Kim's desk to your ears. I'm Mike James. If you've ever wondered what it takes to get your idea made into a Hallmark movie, we're going to talk to a lady that's done just that. And she sells her stories online and makes a ton of money doing it. And that's just a few moments away. Plus this week's tech tip and FBI warning about those new smart TVs everybody's been putting in their living room. And Kim checks in with a media representative for Google and Google Traffic Maps. She'll give us some tips for smart travel this holiday season, whether it's sharing your ETA with family members, finding things to do locally while visiting relatives, seeing how crowded a store might be in real time, or finding good deals on items on your gift list. Yeah, that's coming up in a few. Also, Kim's hot topic this week, could 2020 be the tipping point for cable companies And we'll hear from a 20-something-year-old entrepreneur whose company is doing $30 million in sales. What? How did he do that? We're going to find out. Today's trivia question is, when you do a search for something online, typically you're just going to go to Google, and it's easy and efficient. And Let's be honest, nobody's really using Bing. But that wasn't always the case. Back before Google was the powerhouse that it is today, we had another option for our search engine, and it was Yahoo. It was one of the largest at the time, and many people's homepage was even set to Yahoo. But what many don't know is how the company got its now iconic name. Do you know the answer? We're going to give you four choices. We ask, of course, that you don't Google or use Cortana or Surrey to find the answer. And here are the four choices. Was it A, the first word the founders thought of? B, they were drinking the classic 90s chocolate beverage. C, they were so excited they had claimed Yahoo! And thus became the name. D, it stands for yet another hierarchical, officious oracle. The answer for our trivia question coming up later on in this podcast. And a quick reminder here. You can get the Kim Commando Show podcast, but this is not it. There's only one place to get the Kim Commando Show. You can watch. You can come behind the scenes and watch us live or on demand on your schedule. You can download the uh, podcast as a Commando community member. And that one place to get the Commando Show podcast is GetKim.com. Again, that's GetKim.com. All right. Turning your idea into a Hallmark Channel movie next on Commando On Demand Insider. This episode is brought to you by Kia's first three-row all-electric SUV, the Kia EV9, with available all-wheel drive and seating for up to seven adults, with zero to 60 speed that thrills you one minute and available lounge seats that unwind you the next. Visit kia.com slash EV9 to learn more. Ask your Kia dealer for availability. No system, no matter how advanced, can compensate for all driver error and or driving conditions. Always drive safely. It's Commando On Demand, where we talk to some of the most influential people in technology, the innovators that shape the future, and trailblazers who challenge and inspire us to do amazing things. Here's Kim with our special guest, Barbara Hinsky. All right, it is the holiday season, and you know what that means. Oh, yes. Hallmark movies. Yes, the Hallmark Channel. I know so many of you are sitting there watching Christmas movie after Christmas movie after Christmas movie. And I saw uh, a story about one of our hometown gals here in Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, I'm talking about Barbara. And she's the author of The Christmas Club. And that she now has a film on the Hallmark Channel, which I think is absolutely amazing. So, Barbara, how did all that happen? Well, hi, Kim. Thank you so much as a hometown gal who drives by your studio every single day. Oh, we should stop I'm, by someday. I, well, thank you. I will. Um, I'm just thrilled to be here. I'm having myself a big day with a movie tonight and you this afternoon. So, yes, it was, it was, this is a thrilling day. So thank you. The, the movie came about, um, I was to contribute uh, a Christmas novella to an anthology with other women's fiction authors. But as these things sometimes happen. I was the only one who actually wrote the book. Oh, okay. so I, yeah. So at the time I was a little disappointed, but as it turned out, uh, it couldn't have turned out better. I published it myself and early reviews said this would make a great Hallmark movie. 
it's a little different. The, the storyline is a bit different than their um, normal storyline for their Christmas movies. But then I started asking everybody I came into contact with, do you know anybody at Hallmark? <laughs> yeah. And right. yeah, yeah. And finally, somebody said, well, yeah, my neighbor is the producer of Good Witch, which is their um, most successful franchise, uh, John Eskina. So she said, do you want me to give him a copy? And I'm like, well, yeah, you put the phone down and run next, next door right now and give him a copy of the book. Okay. And- but wait, I want to stop you right there because I want to hear about, so you, because I, okay, we have so many listeners, Barbara, and I've always said this, I think every person has a story in them, right? Yes, oh, sure. And yeah. so so you, did you try to get a book publisher or you just said, no, I'm just going to self-publish this? You know, I didn't. Um, when I first began publishing, I thought, uh, well, first, I'm like most people, I thought, well, who would want to publish this? And I looked, I did a lot of research on how you have to query agents. I do have an agent now, but I just thought, this is crazy. I'm still going to have to do all the marketing myself. I, at the time, I was still a practicing business lawyer. So the business aspects of publishing did, were not intimidating to me. Sure. So I decided, well, I may as well keep, you know, the extra money in my own pocket. And so I did. I'm not traditionally published in print or ebook, although I am traditionally published in audiobook. So I just took my story and ran with it. Did you did you put it up on the Kindle? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And so did, how did you market that? I marketed well before I did the Christmas Club. I had I think I had four books in my Rosemont series. Now I've got six. I started off by doing Facebook ads. Now I do Amazon ads exclusively. Facebook ads, about a year ago, I was pumping a lot of money into them and getting a 300% return, which is great. And then all of a sudden, Facebook changed its algorithms and I wasn't making money anymore. So, uh, boy, I hate when that happens. But I, <laughs> We yeah. all do. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we all do. It's like, no, don't move my cheese. Stop it. Well, um, you know what? You well know. Yeah, and Facebook changed. They totally did. I mean... Uh, I mean, it was, I mean, it was like, I mean, part of the expression it was like crack cocaine for a while. I mean, we would put something up what? on Facebook and literally, Barbara, we would have like 15,000 people hit the website. Okay. Yeah. If I put something on Facebook right now on my Facebook page that I've told people to go follow me on Facebook, mm-hmm. I may get 50 people. That's it. Okay. Isn't that crazy? Okay. And because they pop up that box that says, do you want to boost a post? I'm like, no, not really. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, so, all right. Yeah. So, so you, but that Thank was, you. Yeah. but that was during the days when Facebook would actually work. So now, so you moved yeah. over to Amazon ads and how do they work a little bit? So you can target, you can manually target other authors and other products. Um, and it's, the, the ads are easy to design and, the platform is very easy. One sort of fun fact, I think, on my Amazon ads, uh, I was just targeting other similar authors and similar books and, and getting good results. And then I hired a company uh, who said that they had, and I used some software programs to help me find keywords to target, who had some really stellar expertise. And they said, no, you're leaving a lot of terms unused. And I'm like, all right, I'll give you a try. Well, it, so surprising to me, one of my top keyword terms for book sales is cat litter. Cat litter? Uh, cat litter, I kid you not. <laughs> I never in a million years would have just thought, yeah, let's try cat litter. But oh. people who shop for cat litter now get me and their sponsored products and they click away. That is, you know who what, that knew? is crazy. Who knew? I mean, it's I would crazy. never think like, okay, cat litter. I mean, the Christmas Club. Okay, you know, or whatever, or whatever book you're writing. Okay, so now you have this, this, so how long did it take from the time that you were so lucky where somebody said, oh, by the way, my neighbor is, right? Okay, um, to getting the movie on the Hallmark Channel? Maybe about a year. It was very fast, despite I had literary agents and all tons of people saying, "Oh, you'll you know, a you'll never you'll never get on the Hallmark Channel. B you'll never make any money if you do." And C, even if they auction or option, they start with optioning the product and then they start developing it, they'll probably never make the movie. So 
at every turn, you know how this is, you just get doom and gloom. Yeah. But that wasn't what happened. Um, they ex- they started with a first option, and then right away, they just did the whole thing. And I was in the dark for most of that time. I had no idea what was happening, who was being cast. I knew I was allowed to go to filming. And I don't think I found out where and when until mid-May. And it, and we went to on location in mid July. So, where where did you go on? Lo- where did you go on location? Yeah, it's filmed in Winnipeg. Oh, okay. You know what? Because you know, Barry yeah. and I were just talking about that the other day. We're like, where do they have to go to get set, you know sets like this and towns like this? But yes, that is interesting. Okay, so so the yes. movie is on the Hallmark Channel. And what a thrill for you. I mean, all this just happened in oh, yeah. a year. This is, well, I mean, you had books and you were doing stuff yeah. before that. But the fact that you were able to take a story that you wrote, The Christmas Club, and then have it be part of the 2019's Hallmark Channel movies lineup. Wow, girlfriend, you are amazing. And some Friday when we're recording the show, I want you to stop by so that I can actually meet you in person. And maybe, you know, that next Christmas movie... You need to have a uh, a national talk show host as a character in that next story. I'm just a little subliminal kind of tale. All right, we're just getting started on Commando on Demand Insider. Whether you're going across the country or just across the city, most folks do some traveling for the holidays. So up next, it's a media expert from Google. She's going to give us some insight on using technology for travel tips in just moments. Disruptions are the watershed, trailblazing changes that affect our lives, like smartphones replacing landlines, Amazon online shopping. But 2020 could be downright historical, a tipping point signaling the end of cable and satellite. Okay, how big is streaming? Between November 17th through the 23rd, a series called The Mandalorian from Disney Plus was the most in-demand show, beating out all live TV, cable, and all other streaming services. And Disney Plus didn't even exist three months ago. You can also blame streaming, at least to some degree, for dismal box office receipts this year. But the biggest disruption is yet to come. Analysts predict that cable and satellite could lose a staggering 40% of its customers in the coming year. Can't get enough of Kim's tips, tricks, and tech news? Watch Season 3 of The Kim Commando Show on Bloomberg TV, Saturdays at 3 p.m. Eastern. Or catch the latest episode at commando.com slash TV. All right, as a Commando listener, you know technology moves so fast, it's almost impossible to keep up with everything that's going on. And that's why there's Commando On Demand Insider. It's our way of keeping you informed on the cutting edge of technology. Our next guest is a travel expert with Google and shows you how to use technology to get the most out of your upcoming holiday travel. Here's Kim. As we start talking about, well, the holidays, we start talking about traveling and Google has some really great ways for you to get through the holiday season. Hello there, Molly. Hi, Kim. Thank you so much for having me. You betcha. So how does Google accumulate so much information to figure out what are the best times to go and where's all the traffic and stuff like that? That is a great question. And it's something that we like to do around the holidays. What we do is we take a look back at the previous holiday season around 2018 to see, you know, aggregate and anonymized data and what was popular, where was the traffic, what was tripping people up. And of course, we have some handy tips and tricks. If you're making a trip throughout the holiday season, maybe to visit family. I know when I go visit my family, their number one question is always, when are you getting here? And we have some great tools for that. Google Maps can not only give you real-time information about what to expect along your route, but also it has a location sharing feature that I find really handy because I can turn it on and share my location with my mom to let her know that I'm hitting the road. And then if I do hit traffic or need to make a pit stop, she'll be able to take a look at what my expected ETA is. So that way she knows not to worry or, you know, can save me some leftovers if I'm running really late. Or she can say, you know what, this is just Molly. She's always 15 minutes late. She's been like this her entire life. That's what my mother would say. Okay, it's like it's, like, okay. it's just we're we're on. My mother always says we're on Kim time. Okay, we're on Kim time. Okay, so all right, so that's pretty cool. What else you got? I love I love that location sharing option. I've used that myself because, as you mentioned, this way everybody knows when you're coming. And they're not saying, okay, when are they going to actually get here? 
right? You can avoid that phone call of I'm 10 minutes away or I'm five minutes away. But of course, in addition to traffic, we do know that the holiday season can also bring about quite a few crowds, especially at places like grocery stores or department stores as people are doing their shopping. And so another really great way to use Google Maps during the holiday season is the popular times feature. And you may have seen this one too, but if you're looking up a particular grocery store or a particular store that you're going to purchase a gift at, you can actually pull it up on Google Maps and see a bar graph of when it's expected to be really busy there. We'll even give you some real-time insights into how long you might wait or whether it's busier than normal. So that can come in a lot of handy if you're looking to either shop or get your tasks done efficiently this holiday season. Or you know what I've used it for, which is really great, if you want to go to a restaurant. You know, yes. and you're sitting there going, OK, it's noon. OK, this is a great restaurant. Is it going to be packed or should we go like two blocks away, which um, is really a time saver. So you're not standing there. You could go two blocks only to find out that they have an hour long wait and you could get basically the same thing two blocks away. Um, all right. Next on your list, I see that you've that discovering new things locally. You're visiting a new place. Tell us a little bit about that. Of course. So if you are visiting a new place with relatives that you maybe don't see as much or even revisiting your hometown, I know every time I go back, I'm always shocked how many new things are around for me to check out that I didn't know about. And that's when you can hop onto the Explore tab in Google Maps, which will give you a good sense of what restaurants and coffee shops might be nearby. So that way you can kind of peruse and take a look at things that maybe aren't your old favorites. And as you mentioned, it's also really handy if you do decide that that restaurant is too busy and you want to check out somewhere new, but you're not really sure what's around. You can see Explore and get some ideas as to what restaurants, but also what events you might want to check out while you're at home. And now, of course, the holidays always means food, right, Molly? I mean, it's like, you know, we had our Christmas party and boy, uh, one of the gals here, Monica, she just got a blue ribbon from the state fair for her banana bread cheesecake bread. I mean, it was just like phenomenal. So tell us a little bit about recipes. That sounds incredible. And I'm not sure that I'm on Monica's level, which is why I could use some (laughs) help in the kitchen. And especially around the holidays when you're making things that maybe you don't make all throughout the year. I know that I feel particularly flummoxed by pie dough and I always need a reminder as to how I should be kneading it. And so a lot of us have technology in our homes these days and it can be really helpful in the kitchen if you have a smart display. Like we we have the Nest Hub Max and that's something that I use when I'm cooking because then I can just say, hey, Google, show me how to knead pie dough. And it'll bring up a YouTube video that gives me instructions as to how. And what's also really nice is that it has recipes on it. So if I do need that step-by-step help and I don't want to be messing around with my messy fingers, I can actually ask for the instructions and it'll read them out to me. So it can be a good extra set of hands in the kitchen. Well, you know what? That's pretty awesome. But I'll tell you just what happened, Molly. We have like 6 million listeners. And about a million of these Google Nest Home hubs, they just went to YouTube when you said, hey, Google, okay, <laughs> tell me how to <laughs> tell me how to knead dough. All right. Uh, finally, of course, we have shopping, right? It's the shopping season. Uh, can, how does Google Maps help us find all the deals? This is actually going to be a feature in Google Shopping, and this can be really useful, especially as a lot of people are preparing for things to go on sale. And instead of scrounging through all those advertisements, what you can do is that if you're searching on Google for something that you know you might want to pick up for someone on your gift list, you can actually tap on that product specifically on the shopping tab. And once you select the product, you can turn on the price tracking lever. And that means that you'll get a notification to your phone or over email if the price drops significantly. So that way you can know that you're getting a good bargain and it does all the guesswork for you. So definitely a handy one to have at the ready as you prepare to do your shopping. Well, Molly, I think I think we're all set. I think you've just um, set us all. So we're going to get there on time. We're going to um, find out what's around. We're going to get all the best deals. We're not going to burn anything in the kitchen again. Okay. Now all we need is for Google to magically erase the five to 10 pounds that we're going to gain over the holidays. That would be really something, Molly. I think Google should be working on that. It's Commando On Demand Insider. Don't forget our trivia questions coming up about how Yahoo got their name. And our next special guest is an Instagram entrepreneur whose company has over $30 million in sales. 
How did he do it? That's next on Commando On Demand Insider. If you bought a smart TV recently, the FBI says that you may have just brought a Trojan horse right into your home. Since smart TVs connect to the Internet, the apps to watch streaming services like Amazon and Netflix are built right into the television itself. They have microphones built in, too. Say a command and change channels, adjust the volume or search for a movie. And your smart TVs, they have cameras as well. Which brings me back to the FBI's warning. Smart TVs are an easy target for hackers who can access your TV's camera and microphone. Think of how many TVs are in bedrooms. So now that you purchase it, search the web for your TV's model number and the words microphone, camera, and privacy. By the way, disabling the camera is simple. Just place a small piece of black electrical tape over the tiny lens. Want tech DIY videos from people you trust? Go on over to the Kim Commando YouTube channel and you'll see why Kim's America's top digital expert. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss a video. Just go to youtube.com slash Kim Commando Show. All right, we've all heard it before. Success leaves clues. And Kim says it all the time, knowledge is power. So you're about to get some clues and some power from a young entrepreneur whose company went from nothing to over $30 million in sales in such a relatively short time. On Commando On Demand Insider, here's Kim. If you're on Instagram, you've seen the sponsored post by so-called influencers. These are people who have made a product to sell or they're paid by a company to talk about how great that product is. And it's big business, estimated at $2.2 billion next year. Kylie Jenner gets over a million dollars for a single post on Instagram. Well, what if you want to sell your own product on Instagram? Our next guest launched a teeth whitening product and using Instagram, turned it into a $30 million a year company. Oh, and get this, he's 26 years old. I'd like to give him a big Kim Commando show welcome to Josh Snow. And thanks for being on the show. $30 $30 million a year in revenues. Wow. So how long did it take to get to that point? Uh, yeah, I mean, we started the business um, close to three and a half years ago. Um, and now have branched out as an oral care brand. So start off in teeth whitening uh, and now have branched out as an, as an oral care brand. And it's, it's taken off like I never expected. Well, that's really amazing. And that's really um, a really great feat that you've done. So you started out with teeth whitening product on Instagram. And did it just generate by you put the ad up on Instagram, you want to see how it worked or tell us a little bit about how this whole idea took formation. Yeah, sure. So I had dental surgery um, prior to starting the company. So I spent a lot of time in the oral care aisle at the different stores. And I always wondered why uh, oral care couldn't be beautiful. And so initially I saw an opportunity in teeth whitening So I worked with my dentist directly to formulate the first version of the product. And uh, out the gate, it was so different than what was on the market. Uh, It started to take off through word of mouth. People started sharing photos of it. And then early on, we started having um, some celebrities uh, ordering themselves, paying full price. Uh, And I said, wait a second, I think we're on to something here. What if we had these people post? and share that they were using the product and it could really help us get the word out that our product is unique, it's different, uh, and we could really do something here. And so what makes your product unique and different? What makes our product different, uh, there are two levels of our uh, difference. Uh, So the first level is a formulaic basis. So the formula itself uh, is designed for sensitive teeth. So people who have sensitive teeth, like myself, who are afraid of maybe whitening their teeth, um, we designed the formula from the ground up uh, there's nothing else like it on the market specifically for sensitive teeth. So it's uh, you know it's safe for sensitive teeth. We won the award for best teeth finding kit for sensitive teeth. So that's the first level. The second level is the technology. So we have five global patents pending. Our device um, automatically detects the shade of each tooth, um, self-sanitizes itself, wirelessly charges. It's water resistant so you can shower with it. And it gets smarter the more that you use it. And you can control it all through a mobile app. And then we've taken that into our line of toothpaste and mouthwash as well. I'm thinking, how can we start with the formula from the ground up, take out ingredients that should not be in there, and also think about the environment sustainability along the way. If you had to give anybody advice on how to launch a product on Instagram, what was like your biggest success? Once we started to treat our products uh, like models themselves, so the, the photography I think is very important. The packaging is very important. We spent a lot of time thinking through our packaging 
and uh, you know they call it Instagrammable packaging or Instagrammable products, but thinking through how our products could stand out. And I would say you truly have to come out with something um, you know unique. It's got to be something different. It's got to look different. It's got to truly be different. Of course, it's got to work. Uh, you know, we have less than a one percent return rate on our products because the products simply work and they work better. And so I, I would say focus on the product, but also think about how would someone share this on social media? What would that look like? And take take that thought into your packaging, into your product itself, uh, into the colors, et cetera. Make it something exciting because the the consumer today is very savvy. They're shopping around, they're comparison shopping. They're looking for something that stands out. So, you know, Josh, Instagram's owned by Facebook. Everybody knows that, right? And Facebook changed the model for folks who wanted to actually promote their business. And so it's almost like if you want to get your posts seen by anybody on Facebook, that they put up this little box that says, do you want to boost the post? Are you concerned that Facebook, because they did that on Facebook, might be changing the marketing algorithms for people like yourself on Instagram? Yeah, they already are. Um, So at the end of the day, Facebook is a public company. They have a duty to their shareholders to rise the shareholder value. And the way I explain it, um, you know, on stages when I'm speaking about uh, social media and branding is that a social network has a few ways to make more money. They can add more users to the platform or they can add more products to the platform for advertising. But the third way is really where the where the people pay and where they make money from is adding more advertisers to the platform. So right now we're at a point where Facebook is extremely expensive. Uh, it's very tough to reach the scale that you could reach in 2015, 2016. Uh, with the acquisition of Instagram, they got access to um, inventory that was cheaper. So a lot of advertisers have moved over to Instagram, but because Facebook makes it so easy to advertise on both platforms simultaneously, um, the effect of the price rising on Instagram happened, uh, you know, 10 times faster than it did on Facebook. Now they're looking at WhatsApp, which is what they own that as well. So for us only, you know, two to 3% of our revenue comes from, you know, celebrity driven or community driven post. Um, the rest is because we built a marketing machine in the sense of getting into dental offices. So really thinking offline, um, you know, I, I think that Instagram and Facebook are a great way, um, you know, to, to launch a brand. But when I look at, you know, the next 30 days, which is our busy season right now, you know, we'll probably drive between three to $5 million through the website but uh, offline is starting to rival that, our retail partners, our dental partners. So they could do where else can you sell your product, not just nationally, but internationally as well. So even though the United States has become super competitive and pricey, um, we're seeing areas like France, uh, Singapore, you know, Southeast Asia, European countries, Australia, uh, we're seeing pockets of opportunity in other countries where we can kind of um, uh, replicate that model without having to face that extremely high cost that Facebook and Instagram are now charging. And it's not going to go down. It's only going to become more expensive. So I would say don't build your business off of Instagram, but I think it's a great place to launch your business. I think it's a great place to get feedback and it's a great place to to build your word of mouth engine to grow your business. Well, Josh, this is a great story. Congratulations on all that you've done. Thanks. I mean, I can see you being the next unicorn someday. We're working on it. I mean, our focus is on, uh, you know, we're in the business of confidence, creating products to help our customers smile. Uh, we have grown incredibly fast with a small but mighty team. And uh, next year, we're excited for a rollout so that we can replace your entire oral care hygiene. Um, and we have some retail partners uh, that are very large that have come on board to help us out. So, the end of the day, we uh, we help people smile. We help uh, drive the, the value of confidence, and we can keep doing that. And you know, like I said, keep our products Instagrammable. Um, and hopefully, people will continue to share that the way that they have. They've been incredibly supportive uh, to our growth. And you have great teeth, Josh. Oh, I appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> and thank you so much for being on the show today. It's so wonderful to see how you took an idea and turned it into a thriving multi-million dollar business using social media. All right, it's the Commando On Demand Insider Trivia question. Of course, we all search for something. Most of us use Google. Nobody uses Bing. And back in the day, it was Yahoo that everybody was using. It was on a lot of people's home pages. But how did Yahoo get their name? A trivia question. And, and the four choices are, it's the first word the founders thought of. That's A. B is they were drinking the classic 90s chocolate beverage. C, they were so excited they explained, Yahoo! And thus the name. 
And D, it stands for yet another hierarchical officious oracle. <laughs> uh, okay, so uh, Yahoo was originally created in 1994 and was first called Jerry and David's Guide to the World Wide Web. But with that not being the most catchy of names, they decided to change it to Yahoo because it's just what they came up with. So the answer is A, it's just something they thought up in the moment. Hey, thank you so much for listening. Don't forget to like, and if you love this program, share it with your friends. And of course, if you haven't already, subscribe so you get these podcasts downloaded to your device every single week without interruption. And we thank you for that. Here now, it's Kim with some final thoughts. Uber disrupted taxis and limos. And thanks to Travelocity and Expedia, the local travel agent is just about gone. So what's next? consider residential real estate. It's top heavy with people. It runs pretty much the same way as it has for decades. It generates $75 billion a year for agents and brokers. Now, let's look at Zillow and Trillia with 100 million active users every month, but only 6 million actually buying and selling. That's a lot of window shopping. Does it really take millions of people to sell homes? The next big disruption is almost upon us. Your next home purchase and mortgage can be totally done online. It's just a matter of time. Hey, keep your digital know-how going. Find your local radio station that broadcasts my show, along with more DIY how-tos and tips, videos. We have free news alerts delivered from me to your email address daily, along with the Commando community, where you can blog and ask your tech questions on our website. That's commando.com. I'll see you right here next week.